Assalamualaikum dear learners. I welcome you all here at Allama Iqbal Open University Studios. I hope you all are well and enjoying the weather. Till date, in this program, we have learnt a lot from our own expert Mr. Arshad. And inshallah, in near future, all of us are going to be good experts in English. What I did is I thought about future. So I think we should select a topic regarding some future tenses. The topic that we have selected for today is the future simple or indefinite tense. And to get the more details about the topic, I welcome our own, very own expert, Mr. Arshad Mahmood. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Arshad. How Hello. are you doing? Fine, thank you. What about you? Alhamdulillah, I'm okay. Today, the topic that we have selected is something regarding future tenses. Mm -hmm. The simple future indefinite tense. Right. Tell me very clear, where shall I use will, where shall I use shall, <laughs> will, shall confusion? Uh, right. Before I tell you the difference between will and shall, I must say that there is no future tense. Oops. Yeah. Many languages in the world, mm -hmm. they think that there are two tenses, past and present. Now, what about future? We've read a lot about future tenses. You see, uh, to see whether uh, uh, a word can be changed into future, a form, for example, a form of verb, we see how it takes different forms. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the verb go. Mm -hmm. It remains go in present, in past it changes into went. went. But in future there should be a different form as per rule. But since there is no time for future, so go remains same and they add will. All right. Like in Urdu we say gagi, Did verb you? remains same. So in many languages, including Arabic language, they think that there is no future tense. Mm -hmm. But anyway, by adding will or shall, we make uh, future tense. And we'll be doing the whole tense in detail from two different angles. Right. Got the idea? Yeah, a little bit. Right. So, dear learners, today the focus is on uh, two different angles, form and function. And first of all, I would like to discuss a form. Like other tenses, it also has got positive form, uh, but it takes like the form is subject and then will or shall plus verb, first form of verb, and then object if it is needed. For example, Hassan will peel a potato. So, you see, Hassan will. I cannot sh say shall here mm -hmm. uh, because will is used with the third person. Hassan is third right. person. And after will, we use the first form that is peel. And potato, if it is needed, otherwise we can say Hassan will, uh, Hassan will uh, smile, Hassan will sleep. Right. No object there. Few more examples. You will eat it now. I will boil an egg. Right. You I might think I shall. Yes, I'll explain this thing later on. Okay. We can use will. I would like to repeat the formula. First, yes. there is subject, subject. Then will or shall and with then, the verb. Yes. And first the form of verb. First form of verb. And, and then, then the object. object if it is needed. Right. Right. She will post uh, the letter and Pakistan will win the match. I've seen people saying Pakistan will won. I mm. mean, using second or third form after will that is wrong. Okay. And negative, very simple. Simply add not after will or shall. Same sentences. Hassan will not peel a potato. You will not eat it now. I will not boil an egg. She will not post the letter. And Pakistan will not win the match. Okay, I'll repeat the easy. formula. Yes. Subject, then will or shall with not it. No, will, shall plus the first form of verb. I mean, and then yes, not. Not is between will and the verb. the verb, right. Right, and then the object if required. If, if required, right. Dear learners, kindly write the formula for yourself so that making some sub uh, some statements will be easier for you. Yes, I think it's it's important to write. Uh, then interrogative or uh, question, question form. What happens? Will or shall come to the beginning? Right. Like they uh, like they move to the beginning of the sentence. And then the subject. And then subject. With and the then verb. with the verb and then. If object. Mm, object, yeah. For example, will Hassan 
peel a potato or will you eat it now will i boil an egg or shall i boil an egg but if i say shall i boil an egg here uh, will i boil an egg might be let's say something predicting about future but when i say shall i boil an egg it might it's be like suggestion permission or? permission or suggestion like that so will she post the letter will pakistan will, uh, will will pakistan win the match and this was the form and i think this is one of the easiest tenses in english mm -hmm. as far as forms concerned so we'll be doing the function now it has got different functions like uh, this future simple tense is used for an action that has still to take place i shall or i will see him tomorrow i haven't seen him hmm. so far they will visit their village next month abraham will talk to thomas on saturday and here i would like to uh, like tell the learners the word t h o m a s people usually pronounce thomas hmm. it should be thomas although it is t h but it sounds like Tom. thomas thomas okay. and the nickname for this name is tom hmm. t u m tom yeah. will the hunter kill the bird the shepherd again not shepherd mm -hmm. shepherd will not sell his lambs right so this the tense, function is the action that is yet to be done yet to take place or yet to be yet to uh, yet to be done right uh, this tense is also used to refer to an action that is not planned i mean instant decision and that speaker has just now decided to do something on the other hand an action that is planned we use going to uh, if you like just uh, focus on pay attention to the dialogue I'm going to deliver here the idea of will and going to will be quite clear right. for example a mother says where are you going Ahmed Ahmed says I'm going to the market mother why Ahmed I'm going to buy some books you see going to buy buy is there but before that going to which shows some something already planned mother and after that Ahmed I'm going to visit Asad mother but there is no sugar left at home okay i'll bring that you see he's saying i'll bring mm. he's not saying i, I am, am going, going to bring. because he's planning right now mm. uh, I, he says okay i'll bring that mother what will you do after meeting asad we're going to play a match this evening in fact mother but i hope you know your uncle is coming this evening ahmed oh no i had forgotten that right then i will come back early and i will not play the match Mm -hmm. deciding right now this tense is also used for something that is not within our control and that will take place whether we like it or not it will be sunday what? tomorrow sunday tomorrow good mm -hmm. and job will be 50 next year you know yeah. jo job be job a name hmm? you know the word we call hazrat ayub alayhi salam we yeah. use the word job i didn't know that hmm. uh, people pronounce a job that is wrong uh, the child will become a great sportsman when he grows up so these things we can't control these things will take place unintentionally intentionally or unintentionally mm, yes for example if like you said it will be sunday, sunday. or it will be any day so we can't control can't it can't do anything about it yes uh, we use this tense to order things for example we're sitting in a hotel if i say i will have a cup of coffee and uh, mr dean or mr jafar will have a glass of juice we're telling this to waiter mm -hmm. okay will is also used for offers and invitations will you attend my birthday party will you take a cup of tea mm -hmm. inviting people okay. to do something will is also used to indicate insistent habits in conversation it is then emphasized remember emphasis is very important mm -hmm. if you will have arguments wherever you go people will not like to talk to you why will he tell lies and he will not brush his teeth before he goes to bed so will has to be emphasized here why will he tell lies yes why will he tell lies it means it is his habit and you don't like it so you're emphasizing will mm -hmm. just to show that you don't like it uh, learners we also use this tense in uh, conditional sentences uh, conditional sentences are like uh, where uh, where there's some condition is imposed for example if i say if you run fast you will win the match this is called first conditional because when i say if you run fast i'm using the first form of the verb so will is used in the second clause of this first conditional if you work hard you will pass what if i give an example if it rains this is the condition mm -hmm. and the next part your is clothes will become wet right 
So what is the type of the form of tense going to be used in this conditional part of the uh, sentence? In fact, there are three conditionals in English. Right. We call them first conditional, mm -hmm. second, and third. In the first, first form is used. In the second, second form of verb. In the third, third, third form. Third. I'll give you three examples. Right. If you work hard, you will pass. Mm -hmm. First conditional. If you worked hard, you would pass. Here, Pakistani people, what they do? They say, if you worked hard, you will pass. Will is wrong here because it will here to would. would, yes. And the third condition is, if you had worked hard, you would have passed. Right. Now, in the first condition, there is 100% possibility. In the second, it is some sort of uh, imaginary probable situation thing. or that is the thing that is not usually probable. For example, if I say, if I were a doctor, I would serve the humanity. It is not possible because I am not a doctor. Mm -hmm. I cannot seek formal education of medicine now. Yeah. So we, that is unreal past. That mm -hmm. is called second grade. Third is when there is zero percent possibility. Right. If you had worked hard, you would have passed. It means now you have. There is no possibility of me working hard. <laughs> Maybe supply no. For supply <laughs> right. you can. So conditional is uh, very important. In the difference between conditionals in Urdu and English. In Urdu we say. Agar tum mehnat karo gay, to tum pass ho jao gay, two double, like we use double future. But in English, if you say, if you will work hard, you will pass. Agar tum mehnat karte ho, to tum pass ho jao. Exactly. This is the right translation of English uh, first conditional. But in Urdu, if you say, agar tum mehnat karo gay, that is 100% right. Because that is our language, we know right. how to use it. We've got but our in own English, rules. Yes, but in English, we mustn't say, if you will work hard. If you work hard, then you will pass. Right. So if it rains, the match will be cancelled. Exactly. You're right. Good. We use this sense also for predictions uh, uh, and uh, giving orders. Instead of uh, telling somebody to do something, the speaker just says firmly that it will happen. It is common in sort of military style orders. The army will attack at dawn. Mm -hmm. A general is saying this thing to the army, army and he says the army will attack. Addressing the army. Yes, and he's giving sort of order. Predictions can be used as a way of giving orders. Instead of telling people to do things, the speaker just says firmly that it will happen. It is common in military style orders. For example, the army will attack at dawn. But learners, it doesn't mean that uh, we find these sort of things in army only. You can find this in daily inside your house, in the marketplace, in your classroom. For example, if the teacher says, you will start work at six o'clock sharp, it means it's sort of order. Your father says, you will get up early in the morning. So it is again sort of order using will. Otherwise, we use must or have to for orders. We can use will you to tell people to do things. <clears throat> Note that will you is used with firm instructions or orders, but not requests. Will you give me this book lying on the table? Will you be quiet, please? Make me a cup of tea. Will you? Got it? So your voice has to be a bit raised. We also use will for threats and promises. I'll hit you if you do that again. You will suffer for this. I promise I won't smoke again. So now we'll move to shell and will. Right. And here I would like to ask what are the different forms of shell and will? I mean the negative and the positive form. And how do we use it? Where do we use it exactly? Hmm. Shell, when it changes to negative form, it is quite uncommon. That is shan't. Shan't. And how to spell? S H A N apostrophe, apostrophe and F. then T. Right. Shan't. And will becomes won't. won't, but it must be different from want. In pronunciation, W A N T want, want. is different from W O N apostrophe won't. T won't. That is will not. And won't uh, is common, but shan't is quite yeah, uncommon. Uncommon, you're right. Right. In the first person of the future, shall and will are often used without a definite rule. But there are certain instances where the use of one instead of the other may sound strange to an English man. If we are determined to do something in the future, we can use will instead of shall in the first person and emphasize it in order to show our determination. determination. So it is basically used for determination. I right. will win this medal shows my... I'm surely going to do that. Yes. But when I say I will, then will must be with high... Loud. Yeah. We won't talk to you again. I promise you I will help you in trouble. On the other hand, if a person wants someone else to do or not to do something, emphasis given by using shall instead of will, 
with the second and third person. So emphasis goes to shall, shall. and will for second and third persons. Right. He shall work hard. Father is saying, or the teacher is saying, he shall work hard. Or the same general says to his army, the army shall attack right. at six o'clock, or the enemy sh shall not enter our lands. Right. So it is like, it is emphasized by uh, saying it loudly. Well, I think when we use will and shall, or the different forms of will and shall, pronunciation and the way we are delivering our sentence matters a lot. It's very important. Tone is very important. Tone sometimes is important. it is rising, sometimes it is falling. Like uh, if uh, the general says, the, the enemy shan't pass, shan't means shall not. Now, of course, and this is not the sort of a sentence that is going to be delivered with some politeness in it. Exactly. And they shall not escape. They shall not ex escape. Again, sort of orders. Mm -hmm. Shall also has other meanings. We can use it in offers and suggestions. You know, people say suggestion very commonly. Hmm. Suggestion. But the real word is suggestion. Suggestion. You've got question. You've got exhaustion. And the funny part is Christian. Christian. Yeah. <laughs> but it is Christian. But uh, the religion is Christianity. There yeah, it is now. But Christians. It is yeah, Christians. But you're right. Maybe it's a Christian. Yeah. Maybe they're following Christianity. The same right. pattern. So it is used for what uh, offers and suggestions. Shall I open the window as it is too hot inside? Mm -hmm. I cannot say will I open the window. Shall sort right. of suggestion or maybe a request. Shall we all go for a walk? Right. It is a, a, again a suggestion. suggestion. Or shall I make a cup of tea? Is it suggestion or an offer? Offer. Offer. It is offer. So you see, a simple present tense is not difficult at all. Simply we use will or shall. Mm. And then the first form of the verb. But I must say, shell is getting out of fashion now. I in the know. past, when I was in, in my school, uh, like in, in primary school, I remember our teachers told us whenever we finished an application, the last concluding sentence was, I, I shall, shall be, be very, very thankful to you. Highly grateful. I yes, shall be highly yes, grateful. Yes, but not just saying, even native speakers say, I will be very thankful to you. Shell is getting out of fashion because shell has taken on different meanings. Slang is quite in fashion these days. Even application ends with a thanks in it. Thanks is like. Yes, thank is not, not formal. Then. It should be thanking you in anticipation, mm. but thanks. You're right. It is just because of uh, computer language, what they call netlish. Yeah. The English of net. Or I would or, I would rather say unaware, people are unaware of the rules of grammar or the real charm of the language. Mm, I'm not in favor of slangs anymore. Yes, one reason. Other reason is that there's so much influence coming from, let's say, from Canada, from America, from Australia, from New Zealand. So people sometimes they can't decide which form to use. People are more the, like trend followers. They are not the trend setters. Yes. Okay, now I'll make uh, a sentence. You will change into negative. Right. I will go to Murray tomorrow. Negative. I will not go to Murray tomorrow. Good. And will I, I go yes, to Murray tomorrow? Will I go to Murray tomorrow? But here in question form, one thing that is very important is a question mark. Yeah. In our examination system, if you don't put question mark, the sentence will be wrong. All the structure is correct, but this question mark that is punctuation mm -hmm. must be used in the question forms. Don't you think, Mr. Arshad, this slang fashion is quite in these days? Mm -hmm. I and, mean, and this is corrupting the spelling of English as well. I know. The basic charm of the real English language is gone. It's gone somewhere with this effect of slang. The slang has actually clouded the impact of original English mm, language. You're right. You're right. But uh, this, is, this is a debate. People say, why do you call it slang? It is a language used by society or mm -hmm. a segment of society. If it is used, like there are many... English people who say he don't go, yeah. instead of saying he doesn't go, he don't go. Or they use double negative, I don't know nothing. If it we, should be, I don't know. I know nothing. I, I know nothing or I don't know anything. I but don't know say, anything. Don't know the, the actual sentence should be, I don't know anything. Yes, and I would like to add something uh, more here. I gonna go, I wanna go. You see these American uh, styles coming in. Right. I gonna go, I'm going to go, I wanna go, I want to go. But these are in, if a society uses it, we cannot challenge. For example, in Urdu, if you say something, I say, Ahmed Pita. Mm. What is this Pita? Either should say he was beaten mm. or he received the beating, but look at the construction, Ahmed Pita. Strange, mm. something strange. So Americans and uh, uh, these Englishmen, they've got, they are, I think the gap is becoming uh, wider more and, and more wide. wider. Yes. It's just like um, 
if I give an example from Urdu, the slang part has affected the original English language in this way, like Tumhara kya naam hai, tum ka kya naam hai, mm-hmm. two different, and tum ka kya naam hai sounds pretty pathetic, I mean pretty bad. Uh, maybe if you talk to Pakistani people, they will say that that is wrong, but I've heard something that is, that I think is something very bad, today's society, young generation using this, aap kya kar rahe ho, mm. not aap kya kar rahe hain, hey. like you see using aap, showing formal, polite situation, but ending with something slang. Mm. Aap kya kar rahe ho, we take our hai. own native language for granted. Because we think we can speak it. Yeah. Uh, talking about English, English has become uh, now like, it, it has crossed the frontiers. It is not the language of England or America. It is spoken language. in Africa, it is okay. spoken in Pakistan, India, Canada. And because of this thing, people like us, they are always in hot waters. They are in trouble. Mm. How to pronounce a word, what to say. Look at, for example, the spelling. Ameri- if you type a word, C-O-L-O-U-R in computer these days, it will say wrong. Mm. The red line under it. because C-O-L-O-R. It is C-O-L-O. Because all computer language has been, I think, it has been uh, fed. Reformatted in, that or is something. Maybe, yes, American. But... Uh, I think if you say C-O-L-O-U-R, that is right according to British English. Mm. It is only spelling only. Choice of words. Americans say draperies. The Britishers say curtains. Mm. In fact, we should be very thankful that we have the English that we are learning is quite simple as compared to the classic English. In which for you, we used to use thou and thy, thy, thou thy. And thy. Yeah. English is becoming quite simple with the passage of time. But still, I think English is not that easy. If you compare English with Persian language, Persian people say it's very simple because the f- verb takes very few forms. But in English, verbs definitely, they are not big problem, but the use of article. And then sometimes verb has got regular pattern. Play, played, played, mm-hmm. but go went con. Right. And spin, spun, spun, mm-hmm. different forms. Dear learners, uh, sorry for interruption. Mr. Arshid just said that English is not that easy. But I would like to say the way you teach us, it's pretty easier for us. Mm, thank you very much. Uh, we're talking about different, uh, different varieties of uh, English. Looking at American English once again. Mm-hmm. Look the way they pronounce certain words. We use the word capsule in British English. And we use the word geezer. But look at, look at the Americans, capsule capsule, and geyser, geyser. something very strange, yeah, geyser. When I heard this word, I didn't judge, I, I could not judge what the word was. Mm-hmm. But when I saw the spelling, I could guess, okay, it is geyser. There is a difference in schedule and schedule. Exactly. American is schedule, schedule. and British is schedule. Schedule. And many such words, not ju- just few, you've got, I think, such words in thousands now. Mm-hmm. In spelling, choice of words, one nation says highway, the other says motorway. Mm-hmm. One says sink, the other says basin, the same things. One says uh, capsule, the other says capsule. One says missile, the other says missile. Mm-hmm. And then military, military, mm-hmm. laboratory and Molecule laboratory. And yeah, exactly. Molecule Many and words are, Yes, and what has happened now, people like us who don't speak English as their mother tongue, they are in trouble. Mm. So they don't know uh, what, what we have to follow, the yes. British accent or the American accent. So they, everything is like intermingled. Mixed. Although we've talked about different varieties, uh, but I must say our learners should rather must follow the rules of British English because in examination if they try South African English or American English, they will not score high. Mm -hmm. So if they want to score high, they must keep in mind the rules of British English. I think whatever Mr. Arshad has taught us is quite enough for you all. Keep in mind that you have to write the formula that are being delivered by Mr. Arshit to you. That will be quite easier for you. That is all for today. Take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.